Most cars are honest, God-fearing machines. They have a simple purpose in life to get you from A to B in comfort and safety. But there are some terrible sinners out there, cars that seek to tempt you from the path of righteousness at every turn. And none more so than the new Lamborghini Gallardo SE. Compared to the standard Gallardo, it's more powerful, more expensive, and even more exclusive. It's so bad, it inspires all seven of the deadly sins. <sighs> Not satisfied with a 5-litre V10 that already dwarfed their rivals, Lamborghini are now positively overdosing on BHP. Now, this SE version of the Gallardo has been given another 20 horsepower over the standard model. So, it now kicks out 520 horsepower, and it does feel a bit more eager. But I reckon that's to do with the fact that this limited edition has been given shorter gear ratios, so it accelerates faster. Nothing to do with the engine power, it's the gearbox that does it. <sighs> Most supercars do great with rear-wheel drive, but Lamborghini have stuck doggedly to their prized four-wheel drive system but it's not necessarily something to be proud of. One of the things I've noticed is that when you, when you turn the car into the corner, the car feels fabulous. Got good grip, good, good feedback. But once you're in the middle of the corner and then you start to apply a little bit of power to balance the car, it kind of feels a little bit nervous. It's only when you then start to squeeze the throttle on the exit does the car come back to you. So it's got this strange transition through the corner. Some of that is to do with the four-wheel drive system, but some of that is to do with the setup. It certainly isn't as fun or as rewarding to drive or as pure as the Ferrari 430. It's still great fun, but I prefer the Ferrari. Will owning an SE make people jealous? Of course it will. The car costs £140,000, only 250 will be made, and I mean, look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Inside you get hand-stitched leather, a multimedia screen, and the display for a rear-view camera. At full pelt, the 10 cylinders ravish fuel at a rate of 9 miles per every gallon. With leftovers burning at the exhaust. It's a spectacular way of gorging on fuel. This car has dispensed with a gear lever and clutch Instead, it's fitted with the lazy man's way of swapping cogs. Now, this Giardo we've got has got the £6,000 extra tricky gearbox called E-Gear. It's basically one of these semi-automatic flappy paddles. There's two settings. You've got standard or sport. And in, in standard mode, the gear change is it's fairly smooth. The down changes are good. They're well synchronised. This sort of car, you want to give it some stick, stick it into sport, now feel the difference. It's so aggressive. Here we go, feel this. I can hear the drive shafts almost wanting to snap. I can hear the prop shaft down the middle of the car hitting the underside. Ooh, it just doesn't feel nice, it feels too aggressive. Not for me, I'm going to go back to normal. I'm afraid the anger's on my part. And it's all to do with the over-officious ESP traction control system. We saw Tiff Nadell drive the Ferrari 430 a couple of weeks ago, and we saw those gorgeous, beautiful oversteer slides. Now, I want to be doing those in the Giardo SE, but I'm afraid I can't, and that's because the ESP system won't turn off completely. I'll show you what I mean. So, second gear, pitch it in, and apply the power. just interferes with with what I want the car to do it's constantly changing the attitude of the car grabbing the brakes I want to drive the car I don't want a box of electronics 
dictating what I can and can't do. Just won't let you f***ing turn the f***ing thing! I love this car. But I can't drive it as I want. See what I mean? Just... God, it's annoying! It just... You know, I was set up nicely there, and then it keeps grabbing the brakes and... So, I've spent a day with it. But would I love to own one? No. My big problem is Lamborghini have just announced that their 2006 standard Gallardo model will have the same upgraded engine as this, the SE. It will have the same technical mods as this, the SE. But it's going to cost 13 grand less. So the big question is what's the SE all about? I'm afraid it's a car that's already out of date.